now tuning in to the Aaron Alexander Experience Podcast. Wah, 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 wah. All right, so guys, we here. It's good to see me. Yes, am so I, good to see you. Am, am I noticeably more jacked? No, I'm just kidding. Um, I've been working out a lot, though. I've been I've been really focused on that. Um, but yeah, guys, I'm here with Hadia. I'll, of course, have already done kind of like a little intro, so they know that. Um, for anybody who is new to the podcast, because the podcast is always growing, there's always new people here. Um, I will just say, before I explain what it is that you do, how about you give a brief little rundown of what you okay. offer to the world? Okay, so title is in the world is a life coach, spiritual counselor, minister, healer. Um, but what I really do is I teach people and I support people in getting to know who they are, loving themselves and manifesting their life, heartfelt dreams and desires uh, and giving them tools, life tools that supports you to grow, learn and uplift and get exactly what you want from life and saying no to what you don't want and yes to what you do want. Um, by discovering who you really are, what your nature is and reframing and knowing that there's habits in your life that don't work for you, reframing them, releasing them, clearing them, cleansing them, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <It's> fun. You... <laughs> What I love about you is you're so like, you're so passionate about the work that for you, it's like your kind of explanation of what you do and everything is very like, you know, to tap into the angels of love and light in the universe. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, it's, it's amazing what you do. And I've worked with you for a long time. And for me, um, obviously, I wouldn't disagree with your description. That's all very accurate. But it's like people that are people that hear this kind of talk, maybe even guys listening to this right now, they don't see what that means on a worldly earthly level. Um, I would throw in the word into your description, I'd throw in the word performance coach. I mean, so it's like guys don't listen to even like what you just said, probably and think like, oh, she would actually help me with like, like get more chicks, get more money, um, like get the sick car I want, get a better apartment. Like people wouldn't tie that all in together, but um, I would say one of your biggest things, uh, one of your biggest like mantras kind of is, or points of focus rather would be self-love, right? Just you focus so much on love in general and self-love. And the reason why I say performance coach is because it's like, I can, you, you can make a video, right? And tell a guy, Hey man, you know, you got to self love and he might be like, okay, cool. But you, it's like, you really helped me on so many levels to realize where I wasn't self loving, even based on hateful self narratives that have been so deeply ingrained and you're very big on updating processes and all that, um, to help to update those kind of hateful self narratives. Do you find a lot of your people kind of have that where they're even like unaware that they're self hating? Yeah, most, yes, I think most of us are not aware that we don't like ourselves. I don't like you to use the word hate. It's really strong. And I know people use it. But it just when we use these words, even in the positive saying, I don't want to hate myself, your subconscious mind is hearing hate. And then it lands inside of you as hate. The subconscious doesn't know the difference between reality and non reality. So it's really important to be aware of our words. So I would say dislike. <laughs> so your subconscious mind is hearing dislike yourself. It's hearing like, actually. Um, yeah, most of us don't know how deep the hate, the dislike runs inside of ourselves. Because we get hurt. We get hurt very early on in life. You know, from the beginning of birth, most people's birth process is very grueling and uncomfortable. And um, so, yeah. Yeah. And you said something right there. That's really, really cool. Um, you said, I jotted a little note. Um, you said uh, your subconscious does not understand the difference between reality and non-reality. Yes. Um, and, and that's why it is uh, I'm just such a huge believer in affirmations, visualization, and what we're going to get into here in a minute, which is what you kind of, you and I were talking off air about this at the beginning, 
which is um, talking about even having that like super clearly defined goal of what you want your future to look like with, you know, we were talking specifically about relationships, but anything, but uh, yeah, what you said, it makes so much sense because a, a guy might hear the idea of affirmations, right? Telling yourself every day, like, I am strong, I am powerful, I, I love myself. And a guy might think to himself, well, but those aren't true. So like, bleh, whatever. But it's, it's like you said, the subconscious is a no. So when you're affir reaffirming that, you now are going to kind of operate at that vibration. Well, this is what needs to happen. Breaking it down simply, let's just say you wanted to learn how to drive a car. First thing you do is you take a class on learning how you read a book, right? They teach, you, they teach us how to read a book. You take a test, then they do the um, assimilation thing. What is that called? Mm. <laughs> like a, I think it's yeah. a, a simulation, a driving simulator maybe. Yeah, exactly. Then you gotta get behind the wheel and do so many hours. And that's how, that's how we learn how to drive. And then when you get your license, in the beginning, you are checking your mirrors, your right, your left, front, back, and you're nervous until it becomes in your nature. And that's how it is when we want to change a habit, when we want to learn a new habit. So in the beginning, if you hate yourself and you tell yourself, I like myself, and your subconscious mind is like, no, you don't. Come on. Don't be a fool. That's not true. So you got to practice, 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 practice. Anything new you need to do, you got to practice. If you want to learn a guitar, if you want to be an, a gymnast or an Olympian in the Olympics, I mean, they practice eight to 16 hour days, the same moves over and over and over again. That's why they win because they practice. It becomes in their nature to, to, to do those moves that they're, they're going to present in the Olympics. You know, mm. um, and that's, and people don't think they need to practice their thinking and their feeling. You know, we're practicing our thinking all the time. If you, if people sit down and listen to their thoughts, they have the same thoughts. If they're negative, they're the same negative thoughts over and over and over again. If they're positive, they're the same positive thoughts. That's why in the beginning, it feels weird. It feels weird to get behind the wheel and drive a car in the beginning. And it feels nerve wracking. Not for everybody. Some people they're just like, oh, I can drive. They have the confidence. It's just something that they're born to do. But for most people, it's weird and it's, it's, a, it's not normal. It's the same thing for our thoughts and our habits as well, our actions. So you got to practice and it feels weird until it starts feeling normal, comfortable, and then it becomes part of your nature to be positive about yourself, to really care about who you are and what you do in life. Yeah. And when you don't do that, um, on a much more, like, uh, on a much more shallow level, I would almost say, I, I made a post the other day where I said, um, I said, you have to talk, this was in my mastermind group, I said, you have to talk like you're important. You know, a lot of guys, they don't, they try to like brush through this statement, almost like, uh, yeah, this, this is what I do for a living. Uh, I live over, I live over here, but, uh, but more about you. What do you want? Like, tell me more about where you work, where you live, right? Like, oh, I just do this it's like you speak like you're not important. And so, yeah. oh, well, how do I change that? Sure, it's like, well, do this tone, all right? But you can only kind of like do that tone and always be consciously thinking of it for so long. What you're saying is it's like, focus on that, like on loving yourself, having gratitude for your job, your, where you live, all these different things. And then you are gonna speak like that, like you love yourself. Yes, and, and I say, fake it till you make it. When people first learn how to drive, they don't know. They're faking it. They're just getting in the car and hoping that they're not going to hit somebody that day. <laughs> mm -hmm. So they're faking it. They're faking it till they make it. Whatever mm -hmm. it is that we learn new, you got to fake it. till. That's what that means. Fake it till you make, you got to practice, practice, practice. And then it becomes in your nature to love and care for yourself. It becomes in your nature to start reframing your negative thoughts. And it runs really, really deep. People are always surprised how deep negativity runs in, in our human race. This is why the world is the way it is, you know? I just want to say something, which is, uh, so before we even go too deep here, I actually want to, I have something I want to bring up about what you just said. But I also just want to say that um, if you guys are, if you guys dig Hadia, um, you can find her on Facebook. They can, your group is called Loving with Hadia, right? Yes. 
So if you just join her group, um, it's called Loving with Hadya. And so you can, you know, hear this stuff all the time. You always do videos in there. Really, really good, powerful videos. Um, and so just uh, Loving with Hadya will bring up a page. You can like the page, but then you can also uh, join her group. And um, and then also it's HadyaLoving.com if you guys are interested. And in, uh, I think they get like a, a free a free call, right? But if they would to figure out if they'd want to work with you. Yeah, if they if they want to book an appointment, yeah, they get a free call. Mm -hmm. Right. And they can to figure go, out if how do you yeah. love it? Yeah. And then also we have a free Zoom gathering every Monday, 5:45 Pacific Standard Time. Oh, cool. So it's 8:45 um, Eastern. Eastern, yeah. So and it's for free every Sunday. Uh, come join us. And, That's great. Um, we have deep discussions and you get the opportunity to work on whatever you want to work on. It's a safe space. It's confidential. And um, yeah, we go deep in that group as well. So. That's great. That's awesome. Yeah. So great. I just wanted to put that out there because a lot of people are going to listen to this and people tell me you're one of the favorite guests you've been on about three times now. I think this is going to be your third or fourth time being on here. So yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Well, um, I love you, Aaron, and your people. <laughs> thank you. We all love you, you're too. you're amazing. Thank so, you. <laughs> so I want to say something real quick, which is that you are, uh, you're like the least, okay, people that do what you do, all right, that are like whatever they call themselves, like spiritual counselors, life coaches, energy coaches, whatever. They're all like, this is going to be my language, not yours. They're all pretentious fucking shitheads. Like all of them. I can't stand most of these people. I'm not kidding. I'm not drawn to this world. Like you're like the world of like the people that are in your same kind of, what would you call it? Niche or whatever. Right. I'm not drawn yeah. to that world. I don't like most of them. I really don't. Um, you're like the least pretentious out of all of them. They all have this like, like it for you, it's just so clear that you really are just so about love. They all just have this kind of like holier than thou. And, and then you know what else they do too that bothers the hell out of me that you don't do? Like, so you don't, you never judge, right? That's a big, that's something you're big on is like not judging uh, your desires, not judging uh, even what your client is telling you, uh, something as good as good or bad. I've been in calls with you probably where I'm like, yeah, I really fucked up so bad. Like I fucking did this thing. It was terrible. And you're like, you're like, it's not terrible. Don't judge the action, whatever. And then like you work, you work through it. Um, but the thing you said about fake it till you make it. Okay. That is something it's, a, that's a very controversial statement actually in a lot. Yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> it's very controversial actually. Um, <laughs> And a lot of people, their, their response to you there would be, you never actually have to fake it because once you actually become that thing, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, okay, well, you're not going to start off as that thing. Like you said, you don't start off as a driver. Okay. What are yeah. you supposed to do the simulator for fucking 40 years till you actually are a good driver? <laughs> no, like you said, you kind of fake being a good driver. And it's just, people get lost in the semantics. And that's what I mean in general about like, life coach spiritual this kind of spiritual world is it's like everyone just gets so lost in the semantics of everything and you should never fake anything authenticity and once you're authentically you whatever but yeah if you are trying to be a more confident man and you're not truly there yet okay so sure do the years of work to truly self-love build yourself up build your empire within and, and without um but start also by just having really confident behaviors start by standing with a fucking great posture the way your confident buddy does that gets girls and has money um you know have your room look like the room of a confident man have it clean have it look great so it's fake it till you make it i, I love it i'm a nice. big believer in it yeah i mean i do this and well the thing is i have compassion for our humanity when people do spiritual work they do a lot of bypassing spiritual bypassing they forget that they're human and they struggle I still struggle. I've been doing this work with myself and I have my own life coaches and co-counselors. I have to do a counseling session every day to function. Life is fucking hard, people. <laughs> it's hard. And then I, I struggle with depression. I struggle with overeating. 
and so I have compassion because I love myself I have compassion for my process my dark night of the soul and my light night of the soul and I fake it till I make it when I feel the worst I get up I dress up I wear my best outfit and I go out in the world people go wow you look great you must feel good I'm like no I actually feel like shit but I'm gonna <laughs> show up feeling great anyways I'm gonna do contrary action so it's really important to contradict the negativity and show up in your best self, even if you don't feel like it. Like when people feel like shit, they wear raggy clothes and they're like, Ugh. I wish I was on camera now. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, no, you don't want to sink into your negativity. You want to contradict it. You can feel mm -hmm. negative and show up and wear your best clothes fix your hair, take a shower, brush your teeth, put on makeup, cologne, whatever you do. Some men do wear makeup and they're not gay <laughs> because some people have, you know, their complexion is, is off and it's, it's okay to take care of yourself in whichever way you need to take care of yourself, especially when you feel the worst about yourself. Mm. That's contradicting what you're feeling. Go ahead. I, I just remember you and I having a conversation about um, a spiritual like kind of coach person who you know, I believe, um, or maybe she was just from the internet, but um, maybe somebody you know who had had like a bunch of plastic surgery, maybe like a nose job, stuff like that. Yes, yes. She is one of my good friends who I love and adore. Yeah. She looks like Barbie. Exactly. I swear. She's so beautiful. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. But it takes maintenance. She spends five to ten thousand dollars a month to maintain that look. Wow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's expensive to look like Barbie. <laughs> yeah. Damn. So part of it, right? One train of thought there is, and the more common one is, oh well, you should just love yourself for who you truly are, without all the makeup, without any surgery, without anything like. You know, so so you haven't really done the work. You're actually broken. Most people would view that as broken. They really would. Right. Like most people would be like, oh, you know, you're broken. Um, whereas I remember a conversation we were having, which is like, those things for her are self-love. Yes. This is how she loves herself. This is how she swears by it. She swears by plastic surgery, Botox, on maintenance. That's how she does it. And she loves herself that way. Like for me... I, that doesn't work for me. I don't even like wearing makeup. I wear it when I need to, but you know, I'm all natural. <laughs> mm -hmm. And because I, to each its own. So for me, it's clothes. Like I love clothes. I love wearing sparkly clothes. So find what is good for you and what's natural for you. There's no judgment here. Mm -hmm. What is good for you? You know, a guy who wears torn up jeans, you might feel good in that. If you feel good in that and you can pull it off as a confident person in the world, then you would look hot as hell. But if you feel raggy wearing torn up jeans, you're going to look raggy as hell. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, and I like what you said about go walk with your chest up high, your head up high, and, you know, do the, who's, who's the coolest guy in the world right now? I don't know. In my time, it was Fonzie from Happy Days. <laughs> Do you know Fonzie from Happy Days? <laughs> of course. Of course I do. The Fonz. Hell yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Everybody yep. wanted to look like the Fonz. <laughs> That's uh, Henry I, Winkler, I right? Really, yes. He's really uh -huh. old. <laughs> yeah. He always plays like a, he always plays like a funny role now. He's still out there. Making yeah. It. Yeah. I know. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, it's having those, those behaviors. I say this with, with text messaging girls, with, with cold approach, going out and talking to girls. It's like, okay, maybe you haven't done the years of work yet, but act like that. Cause that is what's attractive. Yes. And the more you act like it, the more it's going to penetrate the subconscious. Um, it's, so it's experiences. Yeah. Action and experiences will shift. But if you're just sitting at home praying and meditating, there's actually a story, it's long, I will not um, tell it because it's really long. But some people will, will start their day with prayer and meditation and they think that's it, they're fine, they're peaceful. But as soon as they get out there and somebody upsets them, they go off. Like, no, 
what what matters is to practice peacefulness if that's what what you want in the world when somebody is upsetting you when somebody cuts you off when somebody flips you off when somebody t calls you an asshole can you stay calm within yourself and loving yourself while that person's going off on you and, and telling yourself it's not about me because it really isn't nothing that anybody does is about anybody but themselves even if it's a good thing so go out and get as many experiences in the world with if you this is mm -hmm. the gaming world go out and 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 ask every woman you see will you go out with me so you can get a no from them so you can practice that no is okay and be comfortable with your nose mm. right yeah you know what i'm saying yes 100 percent. yep and that is what uh that is what everybody is avoiding is they think they want to move towards pleasure but they're just so afraid of the of the of the pain they they they're so afraid of the pain that they're not willing to uh i always say you have to actually move through pain to get to pleasure so everybody imagines like they're here in the middle and then over on the left is pain over here on the right is pleasure. So they're trying to go just towards pleasure. But the problem is that you actually, it's actually like you're here and then there's pain to the right pleasure further to the right. So I want girls, I want girls, but they don't want to get rejected. And so they think that they're going to be able to stay away from that pain, but that's all they're focusing on. Whereas if you actually just have acceptance for it, I'm going to have girls look at me weird. I'm going to have bystanders look at me weird. I'm going to have people literally straight up just be like, you think I'd fucking date you? I mean, you're going to get brutal rejections out here, but the more you focus on what we're talking about here, which is self-love, then the more that like you don't need the validation and the love of others because you already have it abundantly in yourself and, and from everything around you. You always say, you always say everything is here to, to love and support you. Yes. And it is self-loving. When somebody says no to you, they're actually helping you out. I just want to, before we go on that, I wanted to say pleasure and pain are a fine line. There is pleasure and pain. If there wasn't, then our world would never have any, any pain in it. Mm, yeah. You know, the reason, the reason um, Oscar movies win, they're usually painful movies about war, mm. about heartache, because there's pleasure in that, people. <laughs> and, um, well, I'm going to talk about it. You know, w like when people are having sex, and they're about to orgasm, it doesn't look pleasurable. It doesn't even sound pleasurable. <laughs> yeah, true. Do you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's hard work. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I mean, do you want, you want to comment on that or no? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, it's hard work. Uh, yeah, I mean, depending on the, the position, I guess I'll say. I mean, <laughs> you can get into some difficult positions for sure. <laughs> Yeah. Laughter is valuable. So how It definitely fun. it definitely is painful for all these guys listening right now that are addicted <laughs> to porn. That's a fact. And I'm not hating on anybody. This is a this is a I talk to people about this sometimes outside of my world. This is a fucking pandemic. This is worse than any COVID nine scheme bullshit, all right? <laughs> porn addiction is an yeah. absolute pandemic. Um, so you know, I know we're kind of joking well, about that, but there are guys yeah. that they really actually can't come because they're always jerking it to porn. And so now it actually is painful for them and it's painful for her. No one's actually like enjoying it anymore. Um, it, yeah. That's a big deal. It's a big, big deal. Do you ever, do you ever like, do you have any advice for guys that are? I, do, I, I work with guys who, yeah, I work with guys who are addicted to porn and prostitution as well. Mm. And so the first thing I tell them, don't judge yourself. Don't shame yourself. Cause when we shame ourselves, there's, see the thing is people shame themselves but like i said there's pleasure and pain there's a deliciousness in that shaming and you gotta own that <laughs> you gotta own the pain and and that it is useful for you so this is my opinion on porn especially if you started young it's like being feed molested it robs you mm. from your natural connection to your sexuality because it's not real Wow. Wow. Robs yeah. you from your natural connection to your own sexuality. That's deep. Yeah. Because before porn, kids did found their way to masturbating and it was natural. They found themselves to it when mm. they were ready. And then they learned how to pleasure themselves when they were ready. And nobody forced it on them. 
that porn is an imposition. It's they're being forced into thinking that they're that that guy that you know that hot guy with a twelve inch whatever, you know, and it's not based on a twelve inch forearm. I guess forearm <laughs> is that what you're. I didn't I didn't get what you were. But. <laughs> well, that's what I hear guys say. <laughs> yeah. They're all comparing themselves to these porn guys, and I'm just like. What? For sure, you <laughs> so watch. I don't want to make it sound gonna, like I don't. Yeah. I don't watch porn because I'm really against that industry. Mm. I think if you use it as a tool and as a grown up to learn from it, it's fine. But as an addiction, it's it's very harmful. It's because it it robs you, like I said, from your natural connection. And that's why it's hard for young men and women because women watch porn because they all want that they want what they see on camera they don't want their bodies and they don't want the body that that they're having sex with which Mm. is really sad yeah yeah definitely it is um it's uh compare and despair so i mean even just so i mean there's so many there's so much detriment to porn for so many different reasons but yeah i mean that that's a big one for sure um I remember even when I, so I didn't have porn until I was like 15 and I started jerking it when I was like 11. So, uh, you know, so it was never like with porn, but then I, but then I didn't start having sex. So I was like right before 20, almost, almost 20. And, uh, I do remember like my first few sexual experiences, like just knowing how little this stacked up to porn, I, mm-hmm. you know, just like, Oh, this was nothing like, I mean, she wasn't enjoying it the way those girls do. I definitely wasn't giving it to her the way that those guys do. I mean, nothing. So even that, comparing to spare, even just watching too much of that. And the truth is, 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 you know, a lot of the times porn is so extreme, but most women don't want that. They don't actually want maybe every once in a while, but definitely not from like a partner. They want real intimate connection. For women, yeah. it's so much more about that intimate connection um, and so even that getting brainwashed into thinking, oh, they just want it rough, crazy all the time, smack them around. Um, then even that could be really bad for guys. It is. And the thing is that they don't realize that this is, it's a movie. It's not real. Like they mm. don't see what's going on behind the scenes, you know, how porn is made and they have to stop. They're really faking it. A lot of them are not even having an orgasm. They're just faking mm-hmm. it and faking it, you know. Um, so I, I really think porn for kids, it's, it's, it's child molestation. It's because it, it robs you. It robs you from your connection to your, and sexuality is part of our nature. Mm-hmm. And it's like they did um, research on babies. Like babies, they masturbate themselves. They find their genitals. And they start touching themselves and they feel good. So that's a natural connection. They don't know what they're doing, but it's a natural connection to their sexuality. And if they have parents who are educated and aware, they won't shame them. A lot of parents, they start shaming their babies. Oh, don't touch yourself down there. It's not good. Don't touch your penis. Don't touch your vagina. It's like um, a parent who's educated would allow their children and leave them alone, give them privacy to explore their body because it is natural for us to pleasure ourselves to feel good about ourselves to feel good inside our bodies through our sexuality but if you guys are interested you can look at the research (laughs) that's not what i do that is like fascinating though so do you think that even what you were saying at the beginning of this when you were talking about how life is so painful and how even the birthing process in these incredibly unnatural settings you know, mm-hmm. onto the cold table, the doctor touches you before your parent does. I've heard of all these different things that are actually very traumatic for kids. Yeah. So would you say even that could potentially be uh, what you're talking about with like the baby, even that could like subconsciously program you to sexual shame the rest of your life. You're, yeah. you're, you're, you're like two, you're like naked running around. There's like people around and the kid starts grabbing his little thing. And you as the parent, just cause you know, a lot of parents are, they're 20, they're 21. They're, they don't know, you know, they don't know this stuff. They smack the kid's hand away. No, no, don't do that. Like, couldn't yeah. that even actually lend itself to this thing where you don't know why, but you just feel so much sexual shame? 
Yep. Wow. It does. It's some, and Powerful. you don't know. Yeah, and a lot of kids don't remember, you know. And and the and the parents are scared. They're scared for their children. You know, this is why they have laws. You can't have your kids be naked at the beaches and stuff because they're scared of predators. Hmm. So you know what I mean. Yeah. But like Europeans in their families, they're all naked and it's fine in Europe. Mm -hmm. And they're very healthy about that. Like us Americans, we're not healthy around our sexuality. You know, it's, it seems like it's more healthy to watch porn than to have a connection, a healthy connection with a partner, with another person. Mm. Um, it's almost, so it's, so it's almost like the repression of sexuality through uh, society, religion, through these traumatic experiences with your parents, it almost pushes and forces people to be behind closed doors. Exactly. So, so the porn is actually, in a lot of ways, most people's like safe space, probably for a lot of people. Yeah. Wow. And it, it needs, yeah, and it needs to be the other way around. I'm not saying don't watch porn, but if you're gonna use it, use it in addition, like a tool, like a vibrator, you know, mm. a tool to use as a pleasuring with your partner or for yourself, but not an addiction. When it's an addiction, you're robbing yourself from your sexuality, really. Wow. And your natural connection to your sexuality. Yeah. We went deep quick. <laughs> that is, I mean, guys need this. This is super powerful. <laughs> I mean, this is, yeah, this is deep stuff. It's good to... One of the first, uh, one of the first steps to fixing anything is being aware of it. And so yeah. even what you're saying, you know, I, I mean, I didn't even think about all that kind of stuff that could even like stem from childhood. And, you know, I would say, you know, you're more well qualified to help people, you know, overcoming that kind of thing than I am. That's kind of what you do updating and, and, uh, and dealing with healing the inner child. You know, you're very big on that. You had some really, uh, we had some very profound sessions where you helped me to overcome, uh, just thinking patterns I have from who I was as a child and even specific events in my life that we like went back and you like walked me through reliving them. And, uh, I even cried during one of them. It was intense. I don't think I told you though. I'd probably muted the phone. Uh, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, crying is healing. I really promote crying. Mm, we get yeah. shut off from our tears at a very young age, especially boys, which makes me really sad. Men are really loving and sensitive. And then they're taught to be assholes by their parents. And it's like, no, leave your child alone. Let them cry. Because when you cry, you're releasing. You're releasing your upset. And so you're not planting it as a hurt inside of you. So every mm -hmm. time we cry, we're actually releasing something. We're healing something that we're aware of or not aware of. Yeah. You know, I always use the metaphors like when you're planting something in, in the dirt, it needs water to grow, right? Mm. When it rains, especially here in Southern California, we have a lot of dry years and months. When it rains, we're always like relieved. It's like, oh my God, we need the rain. Um, it feels nurturing. It nur Our tears nurture us. It doesn't feel comfortable when we're doing it, but mm -hmm. it's very, very nurturing. I mean, the crazy thing is, I think anybody that listens to this can relate, after like a really good cry, during a breakup, during whatever it is that you're crying about, um, you feel good. You actually do. It is a healing yeah. mechanism. You might still not fully wrap your head around like, oh, you know, I'm just done with the girl now. But like, you just, there is this weird physiological thing that feels good. Not mental. It's an actual like, Oh, like you just feel kind of relieved. So it is like you're exercising a demon or something. Yeah. 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 You're really seeing a lot of deep stuff. So I, I wanted to wait, I, I wanted, wanted to to, oh, to say I am not a sex therapist, by the way. Just want everyone to know that because we talked about it for a while. So please don't get confused. I am not a sex therapist. I'm a life coach. Okay. <laughs> sex is a big part of life okay so I think yeah I, I know I can help you with that but I because a lot of people want labels and stuff and I just want to make it clear you know <laughs> episode 49 featuring Hadia the sex therapist <laughs> that's what it's gonna that's what it's gonna say 
No, it's not true. <laughs> instead of loving with instead of loving with hadya.com, it's sex with hadya.com. <laughs> my you know, my colleagues always say, you know, you'd be good at that. Because I have a lot of compassion for people and I have no judgment, you know. Mm. And that's what we need. You need to have compassion for yourself and you need to stop judging yourself. And you need to accept the no's, your no's and other people's no. N O. Not no's as knowing. Yeah. N O as no. <laughs> And so, a lot of people don't know that, you know, you know, the reason people feel rejected because they don't know what they want. Mm. If, and the way you know what you want is by experiences. Like I said in the beginning, go and ask like every, even old women, even if they're 50, just ask, they're going to say no to you, but that's a good, 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 easy way to feel rejected. It's like, no, dude, I'm like your grandmother. <laughs> mm, yeah. So like, just have experiences and hear no a lot. Not that you'll be numb to it. Then you'll learn what, what's right for you, what's not right for you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, one of the things that you helped me really to understand was, and again, it's this thing, or I've discovered this as a coach where you, you can tell somebody something. I've been told things but it maybe only penetrates like one layer of the onion and then it takes like work and time and life experience to get to the next layer. I always say that about abundance. You hear abundance, you know, Oh, the universe is abundant. Okay, cool. That penetrated the very thin top layer, but then like over time it gets deeper and deeper and deeper. And you start realizing all those little pockets where your scarce self is still hiding and still coming out. Mm -hmm. And it might be lifelong. I don't think anyone ever truly gets it all the way to the deepest layer, but um, you really helped me to understand uh, the idea of working from self-love versus being hard on yourself um, and working with and working with grace, right? Um, you know, just uh, the one that I love the most that I always think about is the motivations that people might have for getting in great shape. So you might look in the mirror and be like, you fat piece of shit, you have no muscle, you're weak. Women aren't going to like you. Get in the gym. And sure, you go to the gym. That's fuel. That, that is Self-hate can be a fucking great fuel. It can be a great high, but it's a dirty high. It's cocaine. It's cocaine. It's meth. It's doing a bunch of coffee. Self-hate is fuel. But the true fuel, the sustainable, lifelong fuel is self-love. Looking at yourself in the mirror and saying, dude, and acceptance. It's both. Self-love and acceptance. Bro, like you have, you've eaten badly. So I'm taking full acceptance of it. You've eaten badly. You've let yourself go. All right. We're not super happy about this. You deserve better. Let's like love our body, love ourselves. And let's like, let's get in that gym and let's go. So, and, and we don't realize how often we are seriously going through our day and being like, you fucking idiot. Are you fucking dude? What the fuck are you doing? Come on. Like we're always doing that and sure it's fuel, but it does not last true. Like self love is truly like the best fuel. I, I agree with you. I, um, practicing ease and grace with loving and light. So having lightness about what you're doing, loving and light. It's like, what is light? Love and light. And to me, that's like, when you feel down, it's, it's, it's the contradiction of, I hate, oh, I got to go hard. No pain, no gain. When you have pain, it slows you down. If you go to the gym and you work hard and you hurt your back or you hurt your shoulders, then you got to stop going to the gym. So mm. even grace sustains you with loving and light and be light about it. It's a good coach, a good, I think a good workout coach. I've had bad, bad physical coaches and I worked with them and they would, I would hurt my body and then I can't, I'm still suffering from my knees doing um, CrossFit because they kept pushing me and I kept telling them, but I'm hurting. They're like, no, 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 keep going. So <laughs> I finally yeah. went to an orthopedist and he's like, you can't be doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, that's going to get you in surgery. I'm like, no, I don't want surgery. <laughs> um, it's a common CrossFit so, story. But yeah. yeah, it's crazy. So a good coach is a coach that takes you slowly and helps you build your physical stamina. It's better to do it slow with ease and grace. 
and that sustains you. That means you can work out longer for the rest of your life than getting hurt and going and going and having surgery and not being able to work out anymore for many years. So yeah, I agree with you. That's the difference. And and something that's coming to my mind is somebody listening right now might be like, oh, well, you're talking about there shouldn't be pain, but weren't you just saying a little bit ago, you know, go through the pain of, of getting rejected and all of that. So we're also talking about various levels. So for one, uh, you're just starting out. Yeah, if rejections might be very painful. But then what you have to do is, like you said, working contrary to your self-hate. So yes. your self-hate might take over your pain body, as Eckhart Tolle calls it. So you might get rejected. And without a second thought, your absolute truest nature goes, goes God, you're so fucking creepy. What are you doing this for? This is not going to work. What? Oh, did someone see me? This is weird. And that's your self-hate. And like right now, unfortunately, for a lot of guys, that might be who they are right now. Literally, it's just filled with these uh, patterns. You always talk about releasing patterns and prints or whatever of like stuff. Um, and so like th that's self-hate. But catching that thought and being like, no, like how about I love myself through this rejection? So good job, dude. She didn't like you. That's okay. You did that approach. I always tell guys, find confidence in what you can control. So you go out, you didn't get 10 numbers. That's okay. That wasn't in your control. Did you do 10 approaches though? Because that's in your control. You have yeah, no excuse smart. for not doing 10 approaches. The 10 numbers don't matter. Um, so yeah, it's, it's powerful stuff. Very I, smart. What You're I, a smart I, coach, Aaron. Oh, thank you. You're a smart coach you too. Are. <laughs> I love you. You're amazing. <laughs> thank you. I can't accept well, that, but... I can't it's accept okay. that level of love. <laughs> you're, you're, it hit your upper limit of receptivity. <laughs> yep, exactly. Too See, much. what I like about your say, what you're saying is, it, it's so the pain comes, the rejection and pain comes from past experiences. And that's what people don't understand. Like the mm. truth is, if none of us ever experienced rejection from the people that we love the most, and that's our family, and it's little things. Like if your mom comes home, she's been working all day and she started, you're like, mommy, mommy, look what I did at school. She's like, oh, I don't, I don't have time for this. And she, she snubs you. That is really painful. So the rejection mm. that you're experiencing, the pain of the rejection you're experiencing is from your childhood. Because if you've never experienced rejection to someone, a stranger that you don't know and you don't care about, it wouldn't matter to you. Mm. And that's why, I, that's why I say use everything for your learning, growth, and upliftment. If you feel pain being rejected by a stranger, it's not about them because you don't know them. They don't know you. They're not rejecting you. They're just saying no to what they don't want. It has nothing to do with you, right? So yeah. if, it's, if it's painful, you got to go take it deep and be like, oh, this, is, this, this, this ouch is actually belonging to something else from my childhood. <clears throat> yeah and so I think about guys that, that are listening to this right now and uh, I think a lot of guys if you really tell them all right love yourself you're amazing you're incredible I think that the first thought a lot of guys that are not at that place yet are gonna think is like like look at my life like look at my life I mean that's like I, to me that's what I, I think a lot of guys would think and so what I love what I love telling people is I've been really big on this recently. It's something I, I, I don't know if I came up with it, but I, I drew up this whole diagram and I'm going to eventually make like a great video on this with like a whiteboard. Um, awesome. Yeah, but it's, but it's focusing on your, your circle of control. So right now, okay, you know, Donnie's listening to this. Donnie's listening right now. And he's like, I don't love myself. My life sucks. Everything sucks around me. All right, Donnie. So right now, yeah, you can't have the women you want. You can't have the money you want. You can't have it right now. You can't manifest it right now. Okay, bro. But what is within your control? Well, if you don't love yourself, then you also don't love your, your objects, your life around you. Like you said, the clothes, right? So what can you do? Your hair is raggedy and shit, or you've got the same dumb hairstyle you've always had or a hairstyle you like change it up, right? go to a place where you can someone that knows what they're doing a stylist and ask about your head shape and be like what's the best haircut for my head shape get a nice haircut right clean your room clean your kitchen clean your car do these things that are within your control 
And so it's like a great path to loving yourself is loving the things around you. Your cracked ass screen on your phone. Every guy in my boot camp shows up with a fucking cracked screen. I'm exaggerating, <laughs> but but I see it a lot. I'm like, go get your fucking shit fixed. So loving it's only stuff $50. around you. It's fifty dollars to get your screen fixed. Yeah. At Boost, no, do you guys have Boost Mobile out there? Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's worth it, and you know what it does? It gives you self esteem. Small yeah. little acts like that builds your self esteem. The reason people don't show up in their best because they have low self-esteem. And the reason you have low self-esteem because you're not taking care of your life. You're not washing your car. Like you said, you're not brushing your teeth. You don't smell good. Of course, you can have low self-esteem when you're not self-caring. All these little acts, taking the trash out. When you leave your car, pick up all the trash. And it takes like a minute. It really does. If, you know, a lot of people eat fast foods and they leave it in the car and they leave it in the car and then it piles up. No, before you leave your car, pick it up. It takes less than a minute. Pick it up, take it with you, put it in the trash when you get inside your home. Little things like that build your self-esteem a little bit at a time. So it's, it's really esteemable acts, they call them. Esteemable acts helps mm. you build your self-esteem. I love that. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to talk about what we talked about right before we got on here, which is, uh, what you were saying, which I fully believe, which is that at the end of the day, most guys, they want to end up in a, in a fulfilling, loving, monogamous relationship. Um, and you were talking about kind of, you were explaining to me how important it is for people to, uh, to kind of get clear on their desire and what they want. Could you kind of elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah. Can you hear that? Anyways, sorry. <laughs> was, it hap was it happy? It's my pussy. She's having a bad dream. Wait, we where's, two ha dogs. where's happy? She's right here. Happy couple. She's asleep. <laughs> this is the longest I've seen you without happy. Well, she's sleeping next to oh, me. Oh, there she is. Say hi to Erin. Hi, For everybody Aaron. that's just listening and doesn't doesn't follow Hadia, she's got uh, she's got this sweet little what is that thing? A Pomeranian or some shit? She's a Maltese. <laughs> a Maltese. <laughs> growing up, growing up, anything smaller than like a Labrador, my dad is always just called rat dogs. So that's what we, <laughs> that's what we would call that. <laughs> Happy's a red dog. She's a cute red dog. <laughs> she's adorable. She is so sweet and loving. Yeah, she's amazing. Yeah, she's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, we'll get back to our thing. So, yeah, it's really important to know to know what you want, but also to have the knowledge that you can change your mind. And it's important to have a lot of experiences. Hmm. To know what you want like go out and date as many people as you can and have a lot of different experiences have a lot of sex you know this this thing about waiting till you're married i'm so against that and i don't think and and i disagree with this language as oh you're a slut you're a whore you're a man whatever you know it's really important how would you know what you like from food if you didn't go out and try it, if you didn't go to Chinese restaurant, Japanese restaurant, even Vietnamese restaurant, Mexican restaurant, Italian, I don't know, Puerto Rican. <laughs> what, like we don't know what we like until we experience it. The mm. same thing with clothes. If you don't go out and try all the different kinds of jeans, you don't know what, what looks good on you, what makes you feel good about yourself. So it's really important to have a lot of experience and travel. Like, I highly recommend traveling. Save money and travel and have experiences in foreign countries with foreign people. And it enriches, it, it enriches your life. It makes you a fuller person. And it teaches you things about yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, I think people get robbed, it, especially people um, who are dogmatic about sex and about relationships. and. You know, a lot of, a lot of people, um, I don't, I don't know what the right language is without offending anyone. <laughs> Just offend them. They don't care. <laughs> if they've made it this far, if they've made it this far, they're a fucking diehard fan. They don't give a shit. 
like if you're well, like a well, stuck up thing, like yeah <laughs> well because i i think there's a lot of dogma out there and 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 it robs us it robs us from learning about ourselves and who we are and and it helps us make the wrong choices actually if you have only limited experiences if you're a person who only grew up on eating mcdonald's you have you've been robbed. You've been robbed from life experiences, just eating McDonald's, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and then you go out into the world you're like, no, man, I don't eat that. Well, how do you know? Have you tried it? No, I don't need to try. I just don't eat that. You got to try. You got to mm -hmm. try a lot of different flavors of people. A lot, and pe people always go, oh, I'd like, do you know who Pamela Anderson is? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. So when she was famous, I think most 99% of the guys wanted to be with a Pamela Anderson. Yeah, for right? sure. But it's like, how do you know? You've never even been with a Pamela Anderson. You, <laughs> you know, they just have it in their heads. Like, that's what they like. You don't know what you like until you experience. Have experiences. Date as many different people as you can. Have sex with as many different people as you can so you can figure out what works for you. And this goes, this goes back to what yeah. I was saying earlier Don't you about, think, Aaron? <laughs> about you, like being like the least pretentious, like spiritual person, coach, whatever, because most people would not say that most people would not give that advice. I don't think, but it's well, the problem is that it's true. It's true. It's reality. And I think you're right about the dogma of, of, for whatever reason, religion, just overall, like super conservative upbringing, whatever it is. Um, where it's almost viewed as though for every sex partner you have, it's like a piece of your soul that's taken away, taken down to the devil. Um, and, and what you're saying is right, because guys get married, and I always say this, and it's like controversial in my space to even say this, I'm really not that against marriage. I might end up one day married. I don't take it off the table. I'm not fully against marriage. Uh, what I'm against is inexperienced and young marriage. Guys that they have no fucking clue like you said they've been with one maybe two girls uh the girl treats them like shit but they have they live in such scarcity that they're like well this will probably be the only one i get and i guess consistent sex would be good and not having to go out and work for it it's it marriage comes from the wrong place so so much so when you just when when guys just get a basic education on the minds of women and and uh, what we call the red pill which is kind of this understanding of the true nature of both men and women where not everyone is out here is out here is going to love you forever and never just try to come after you for your money and keep your kid from you and and just all that kind of stuff you have to have a good understanding of it and the best understanding of it you know it to get your bachelor's your master's degree in women is to to be with a good amount of them Exactly. And there's no shame about that as long as both parties are willing. If you're not a creep, if you're not a rapist, if you're not a predator, you know, then it's fine because women want experiences too. And, and I don't know where this idea still happens. It's in your world, especially like, oh, we're being creepy. It's like, no, women want to have experiences too. <laughs> You know, women yeah. are not sitting at home going, oh, I want to get married right now in their 20s. No, they're not. They're like, I do not want to get married and I want to have experiences. And, and, and here's people the thing need too. to be real about that. Don't you find that, Aaron? Yes. Uh, I'm writing this down right now because I was, was going to say, I'll, I'll say it now. <laughs> Every time you approach, right? So it's like you approach a girl and you hit on her. Even if that girl looks at you like you're a fucking creep or something, whatever. You actually, maybe it's not someone you wanted to give value to, but you actually like, it's a good thing always. I've had girls where, uh, even back when I did the infields, you know, like the hidden camera stuff of me talking to girls, I had videos where girls were in relationships, married, whatever it turns out, but they're like, but like, I don't know. Thank you. This like really made my day. Yes. So it doesn't matter. Like it's, it's every girl every person likes validation if a girl that is not attracted to, i'm not attracted to a girl at all but she comes up to me and is just like i you're like really handsome i don't it doesn't matter that i'm not into her in any way i'm like that felt really great 
you know what I, I was I was uh, working with a client we were talking about this I'm like you know that girl that comes you're out gaming and that girl that comes up to you you're not interested in just like oh my god hi it's Mina and you're like oh get the fuck away from me and I'm busy here trying to pick up my 10 and and I'm like be open-minded maybe that girl you would say yes to you would go home with and you would have the best experience of your life mm -hmm. we rob ourselves from saying no to what we think is not for us. You don't know until you try to have mm -hmm. an experience. And because that girl is so into you, you really could have the best experience, the best sex, because she's gonna go all out to please you, dude. So why not enjoy it? <laughs> I'm serious. You're, you know you're I'm <laughs> I 100% agree. You're absolutely spot on. Like, yep. what, what, why? Why would you wanna say no to somebody who's throwing themselves at you? Yeah. That it's like from a woman's world when a guy throws, there's, it's like, yeah, okay, the guy wants to take care of me. I'm going to have a good time and enjoy it. Uh -huh. You know? <laughs> yeah, definitely. The girl's going to be, if the girl's maybe not your exact ideal of looks or whatever, uh, yeah, for a lot of guys, especially if they, they don't have a lot of women or whatever, it might be, it, yeah, it's like the girl will be so grateful just to even be there. So she's going to like really go all out. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And yep. do a lot of extras. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, you're spot on. And yeah, I think guys do close themselves off in a lot of ways to whatever it is, whether it's the, the quality of woman isn't there for, for the guy or, or even more so just even the, the experience, right? Like not even being able to have uh, that experience potentially because they go into a bar and there's tons of girls there but they're so in their head about, about what everyone's going to think, what she's going to think, what everyone's going to think that they close themselves off to that, to, to any and all experiences and they go home defeated. Yep. They feel awful. It's, it's a shame. You know, they say, be careful what you ask for. Cause you might get it. And what that really means is we ask for something. And if we get it, a lot of times we find out it's not what we want. And a lot of us rob ourselves having this image of our perfect like sexual partner, our perfect life partner, our perfect house, be open. It's this or something better for the highest good of all concern. You know, the something mm. better could be that girl who's, who's at the bar going, me, 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 go out with me. Hey, I want you. That could be the better thing that night for you, dude. So go for it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for <laughs> like, sure. I, who's, who's like the Pamela Anderson nowadays in, in, um, uh let me think it's not really I'm an not actress it's not even like an actress i don't people don't even care about actors and actresses anymore it's all about like instagram thoughts okay it's all, it's all about instagram <laughs> thoughts so like a really big one is uh alexis wren she's she's like kind of notoriously one of the hottest chicks on the planet i would say um okay um, yeah so, so every guy now wants an alexis wren right mm -hmm. yeah and, and if it's not someone that looks like her, you say no, and you keep saying no, you're robbing yourself. Because the truth is, dude, you're never going to get that, Alexis Red. She's, she has, if she's high on, on the, the cream of the, the crop, yeah. only not too many people are going to get to her. You know what I mean? Right. Her, her exact, <laughs> her exact self. Like, guys can get to a yeah. point where they're with girls that that make them just as happy as she would. Cause here's the thing too, that a lot of guys don't get is it doesn't, I'm not even talking about looks. I'm not talking about if a girl's a 10 or a five, whatever the hell you want to say. A lot of the times you end up with that girl you think you want and you just don't vibe at all on personality and the sex will only take you so far. I've been with, I've been with beautiful, beautiful girls, girls that like guys would be so blown away by the fact that I ended up cutting them off. Like that I'm the one that literally told this girl, like, I, I don't want to see you anymore. <laughs> they'd be like, what? Like they'd fucking pay anything to like be with these chicks. And, um, and it's because like, I've done it because I get to like those girls and there's some high quality chicks where they've been amazing. They've been fucking, I remember talking to you all about the one, you know, I was like in love with this girl and she's the, still probably the hottest girl I've ever been with. And we were together for a long time and it was incredible. Um, but then I've been with ones where I don't like them as people. I get to know exactly. them more. The more I get to know them, the more they become more themselves. And I, it turns out I don't like being with you. 
So, so even what you're saying, you might get to that Alexis Wren quality girl or whatever, and you might hate her. You might actually date yeah. Alexis Wren and you're going to fucking be like, you're annoying. Exactly. Exactly. And then, so why rob yourself? Because the girl that you think is annoying in your head might be the best thing for you, actually. You might feel good about yourself. If you're, if you're hanging out with, with a person and they make you feel good and you feel amazing, that's the person you want to hang out with. If you're hanging out with, person, with a person who you think is God and you're, they're not, you're not good enough for them, run. <laughs> run yeah. as fast as you can. Get away because that person is toxic. Even yeah. even if in your mind they're an Alex Alexa you said Ren? Alexis Ren yeah Alexis Ren you know it's it's like Alexis Ren is not good for everybody she's good for maybe a few guys you know that match up our energy your energy matches up mm -hmm. with them so yeah. Um, yeah stop robbing yourself stop thinking you're too it's this is what we do as humans we're either too good for that person or not good enough. Hmm. so we we box ourselves i'm not good enough for that person or i'm too good for that person how about just having an experience and then decide if you are enjoying yourself or not i love it i think we'll close on that <laughs> simplify it yes <laughs> this is this has been a this has been all over the place it's been really really good I told you at the I told you the first time you were ever on the podcast, you were like, What are we gonna talk about? I'm like, everything. <laughs> everything. So don't be too good or not good enough. Just hang out and see if it works for you. If you're having a good time, then have a good time. If you're not, pick yourself up, put on your shoes, and walk out the door. You can say no <laughs> and you can say yes. Awesome. Thank All right, you, guys. Aaron. This was fun. Of course. It's always and fun. You look yeah. amazing. You are Thank such you. a handsome man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, guys, if you want to, I really recommend uh, definitely starting out with the group. You know, that's where you can, if you liked any of the stuff had you talked about, you're always making great videos. They're, they're inspiring, they're motivational. And it's just, I'm a big believer in the fact that most of the world is almost trying to keep you pessimistic and negative. And so anything that you can follow that is uplifting and helps with self-love, it's going to be super beneficial. So the group's free. It's uh, again, had uh, loving with Hadia H A D I A um, on Facebook. So you guys can just go follow her over there. We'll put that in the show notes down below as well. Um, and then, um, hadyaloving.com but they can find that in the group and they can access your zoom call all of that will be in the group so yeah, start there come on the zoom call it's really valuable and it's for free <laughs> that's awesome that's great and come work yeah. with me and this is the first podcast you've been on where you've had the zoom calls you didn't have them the last time you've been on the podcast so, right we just yeah, started so. them in may because of the covid um and this too I this too. Be open to this too. A lot of guys, they don't like getting on a call like this or something. I do my mastermind call every week, right? And in, in my group. And uh, a lot of guys don't get on. And I, I've told guys, I'm like, I think it's because a lot of you are shy. I'm like, there's no pressure. Give it a chance. Get on. You don't even have to participate, but be there. Be a part of that energy. So you guys might be like, oh, is Hadio going to like call me out for my self-hate? No, she's no. not. Don't even, don't even have to turn your camera on. Just be there for the call. Uh, yeah, be there they for do the have energy. to turn the camera. Yeah. Oh. Um. You know that's they do have to turn their camera on for the safety of everybody. Um. But they don't have uh. to share if they don't want to, and it is it is a safe space. But I, I, yeah, have an open mind. Experience life. You're young. Life is for the young. Experience. Have as many experiences as you can with people, not just porn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> People over Get porn, out of your 2020. Room. Yep. All right, Hadia. Thank you for being on. You're I love you, Aaron. I love right, you guys. Love you Take care. Bye.